It had been, been my intention originally to, uh, to read from a new novel, which is about a day in the life of a young woman. Uh, and in a sense, the, the novel is, is like a, an illustration of bravery, uh, simply because she's a, a single mother with a six-year-old kid trying to survive in a horrible job. Eventually, when I was thinking about uh, uh, again the theme of bravery, because um, there's a lot, I'm sure, I mean, many people don't kind of like this notion of uh, bravery as though it's, it can be kind of uh, stuck into a box, you know, when people's entire lives are, are brave, just the existence alone is brave. And it made me uh, think about. Uh, language of course language itself and how it reminded me of being uh, with other writers about 15 years ago in istanbul uh, we were there at a, an event organized by amnesty international and international pen it was in support essentially of the kurdish people in turkey and at that time uh, under the turkish constitution uh, a husband and wife could not uh, celebrate the birth of a girl, for example, uh, and singing a song uh, and using her name and so on. The very use of, of the, the language in that sense was a crime under the Constitution. And when I was working on an essay to do with that, it, it occurred to me under the, that Constitution that it was also a, a criminal act for myself uh, if I was to read a poem or a short story in Gaelic, which is a language in Scotland that had been prescribed before, but it was a language of my grandmother, but uh, two generations ago, uh, and since then, of course, the language has been beaten out of uh, my own culture and my own family. So instead of reading the novel, I thought I would read uh, a section from an earlier novel of mine called Translated Accounts. It's written in the voice of a young man in a war-torn land. His voice rendered here is not his own, but a form of English translation. Great surprise nowadays in the voice of imperialism is usually rendered in English. This young man was not at liberty to give the account in his own language. This section I'll read from is self-contained and it's entitled Leg Wounds. It was tiredness, being so tired, we too. If exhaustion is healthy tiredness, I do not think so. Tiredness of our work, operations, what operations? Some speak of our operations, some of duty. I speak of this land. It is difficult, and hills there, and he was leaning to myself, onto my shoulder, could not walk. I am strong enough, and if he also is strong, strong man, stronger, I too. And he is not so heavy, I could take his weight, but that night, what of it? We had found a space, but there was little shelter if a sanctuary. There was no covering, only clothes. What warmth? None but we two. And I recall the shivering, shivering, and could not get warm. A time when I never, never could get warm. And the wind through us, my colleague, the same. And shivering, shivering, I could not give warmth to you, my colleague. Later was the sweating. I was lying tightly to him, and that was pain, and I did not understand, nor then knowing, but later, and all was thickness, stickiness, stickiness of that, and by moonlight I saw it now, the blood, blood all, and when we ripped the material of the trouser, seeing how that the right limb also was damaged at the knee, swollen there, and colours of the flesh ugly. Yes, I knew they would sever this leg, so I thought it would be cut from him. Yes, I thought so, and he also, looking to these wounds, if some other 
nothing might happen or if this until later to myself I thought I saw in his face this further a puzzlement. I saw it there, it was a puzzlement and he did not look to me, not to myself. If so, he was thinking not leg wounds may be fatal wounds. No, how can that be? It cannot. If so, he was thinking, how can it be if leg wounds may be fatal wounds? We neither of us conceiving of that, but how that tomorrow must come. Of course, day, day will break, and how he might then walk. How to do it as so we must, moving from that territory, if escape, what escape may be, he to rely on myself, of course, and for walking a stick of wood, and tomorrow I would find one, and it was tomorrow he was dead, next morning. What I say now, speaking of him, I shall get a stick for you. It is a stick for you tomorrow, a crutch for you. He was gripping my hand, yes, greater pressure applying to it. His brow was fiery now, cold, sweating cold. He looked to me, tomorrow there is a stick. I said it to him, I said, I shall find it. There is a stick, I shall find it. We may escape out from this territory. You may walk. This leg will heal. What sentiment. Tomorrow I made the escape out from that place. Yes, leg wounds may be fatal wounds. He knew it if there was a truth. I do not know his look. That we then were alive, yes, as one. No. Did I feel that then about us? No. Himself, myself, warmth of my body, yet that night, what of it? What do we say? I can discover what we say in that process. It happens and we act. Look, it is happening. We act. Act is the knowing, saying, speech act. What is your language? If it is my language, he slept by my side, was dead. Yes, I think then holding on to him if he was dead. Yes, sentiment. I do know sentiment and international agreements, heads of states, yes, our colleagues, I do know sentiment. But I could not get warm, not that night, shivering. I to give him warmth, my colleague, his body, he lay, and his pain was there, and on the clothes, and I to his leg, it would not be staunched, using garments, my garment, and later I was sleeping, stopping sleeping, could not waken, he only by my side, and there was warmth, but later again was cold, and I was awake, so cold, colder, this was how he died. We then were together. Thanks.